In this tutorial, we are going to be laying out our magazine spread. We are not going to be putting any of the pictures or text in yet. We're simply just going to put down boxes, text boxes, picture boxes that we will later fill with the images that you have collected. Because this is just a tutorial to learn how to use the program, what I'm going to do is we're going to place the picture of the layout we will be copying for this particular tutorial. Anytime you're doing this on your own, you need to set your own layout. You need to choose your blank space, um, the spaces that you'll be uh, occupying with pictures and text. You also need to choose that font wisely. Um, but for now, we're just simply going to mimic the um, layout that I've already found. And because of that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Place. This is how you place any document. And you will find this um, magazine layout in your class resources folder. And in that class resources folder, it will say magazine layout. And in there, you will find this particular picture. So go ahead and say File, Place, and search for that picture. You're going to notice that it comes up quite a bit bigger than the actual space. When you are resizing pictures in InDesign, there's a couple of ways to do it. One, you can simply take the box that surrounds the picture and adjust it, continue shrinking it down, pulling the picture around until it fits in the space. But notice what happens is the bounding box changes but the picture inside has not gotten any smaller it's simply changed the area around the picture so what you're going to need to do is first of all if you'll notice it's very pixelated and as I told you before that's because it's using a lower quality to make sure that this runs smoothly so as you saw I right clicked I changed to display, display performance to high quality okay so now what do I do? I have my bounding box, which is the area around the picture, fit to the size I want. But the picture itself, I can't see everything. So what I will do is I will use my right click again. I will say fitting, and I'm going to say fit content proportionally. Okay, and that gives me my magazine spread. It's approximately 11 by 17, the size that I want to make my tutorial spread. So Next, what you're going to want to do is go up to the top, make sure you've clicked on the picture with the black arrow, go up to the top and there's an opacity bar. Go ahead and just knock that opacity down to 50 or below. You just want it very faint in the background so you can place um, objects over the top of it. If you would like, you can go ahead and right click and you can also lock that image. That's one of the things we talked about um, to prevent it from moving around. Once you have done that, we are going to begin to simply lay out the space. We aren't going to place any pictures or any text yet. We're just putting out the pieces that we want. Now, when we begin adding pictures, you may want to adjust your layout to best suit the pictures that you have. And I will talk more about that once we get to that step. But for right now, we're simply going to create photo boxes where we see photos. You should know where the photo box is located if you've watched the basic tutorials. I'm going to start with this long skinny photo box and then I'm going to work my way around the image. One thing I'm going to do on this particular space, because each of these three boxes appear to be the same size, instead of creating three individual boxes, I'm going to use copy and paste. And remember that's control C, control V. And in InDesign, they have this nice feature. You can see that green line. It's kind of grabbing the box. It's helping me align it to make sure that they are perfectly aligned. It does a lot of the work for you that in previous versions of Photoshop, you had to go and use this align tool over here. So it's nice that it's automatically doing that. I'm going to hit Control-V again and get that third box. And again, you see it's, it's snapping. It's giving me green lines and blue lines. It's putting it right in the center of the page. It's also aligning it along these edges. I'm going to begin or continue making photo boxes. Okay. And I, I, I may end up changing these later. And I'm not making them perfect, I'm just getting them in a general space. Okay. 
Now, what I want to make sure is that I have them aligned the way I would like. I will say, as a personal preference, I'm going to go ahead and take this picture box and the picture box above it, and I'm going to use this align tool over here, and I want to align these along this left-hand side right there. So this picture and that picture line up straight. So I'm going to go ahead and align those, and you'll notice this picture box moved over to the left. I also want to make sure this picture and this picture are aligned across the top. So I'm going to use this toolbar right here, and anytime you're unsure what it does, if you click it and you don't like it, you can always hit Control-Z. So I've aligned it across the top. These little boxes are fairly self-explanatory. It tells you, okay, you're aligning it on the left, you're aligning it through the center, through the white, right side. Uh, top, middle, bottom, and then the distribute spacing, horizontal spacing, and vertical spacing. Okay, now that I have all my picture boxes placed, I'm going to go ahead and unlock this so you can see what it looks like without that behind there. I'm going to turn the opacity down. You don't need to do this, just watch so you can confirm that you have what you need. I now have several picture boxes laid out, okay, and I have them aligned. This one, I have that one aligned, and I have these aligned through the top. So now what I can do is begin placing my text. Okay, This text is going to be various text boxes um, to accommodate what uh, we see below. Go ahead and make sure you follow the amount of text boxes exactly. You may add more or take some away later, but for now, do exactly the amount that I have. So start with a text bar there. And you're going to create a text box for your title. Okay. And I do want you to go ahead and get a bit of bigger size. Don't worry about the, the name of the font or any of that stuff right now. I just want you to give it a name. So I know I said to do a city, but I'm just going to say Ethiopia. And then go ahead and leave that box the way it is. You can add this additional information later. This next text box, what you're going to do is for this particular paragraph below, you're going to encompass this entire area. Even though it's in two columns, there is a column option within your text box. And you're also going to go over the top of this picture. And I will show you later how to make those two things intersect. What you want to do right now is you see your flashing cursor. You're going to right click and you're going to say, um, sorry, let me find it. Fill with placeholder text. Now it's just going to be a bunch of gibberish, and you'll notice it's one column and it's also going over the top of the picture. Don't worry about that for right now, just leave it as is. And go ahead and come over here right below this picture. And I would assume you're going to want that to line up with the picture above it. Again, right click and say fill with placeholder text. And then the last one is just a small text box right over here that's going to hold your captions. Okay, keep watching those green lines that help you snap to the pictures that have already been placed in there. Put all of them in with placeholder text just so that you can have an idea of what it looks like. Okay, the last thing you're going to place is just some colored boxes. There's three places where they have them in the layout. There's this top corner, the bottom, and this bottom. We will add page numbers and stuff later, but for right now, you're just going to grab a graphic box. Remember, this is not a photo box. It's just a graphic box. You're going to place three of these. One, again, use your snaps to copy and paste the one you already made because they are the exact same size. And often it pastes it into a weird spot in the layout. At that point you should be able to click on your background picture. If it's locked you can go ahead and unlock it. Mine was already unlocked. But go ahead and click on your background picture and simply hit delete on your keyboard. Okay, That should give you the basic layout. Alright, to finish up your layout, what I'm going to do is show you how 
um, number one, how to make these into columns, and then also how to make the picture and the text interact with each other. Essentially, how do you keep the text from going over the top of the picture? That's what I'm going to show you first, and it's fairly simple. You need to click on the text box, hold shift on your keyboard, grab the picture box below, and right up here there are several different tabs. Right now you'll see there's a box with lines going through it. What we want is the box that says don't let lines go through it. And you'll see that these now interact with each other. The next thing you're going to want to change is to make this into columns instead of one large paragraph. Now, if you were doing your own magazine layout, you may prefer to have a large paragraph versus columns. But just for the sake of knowing how to do it, I'm going to go ahead and keep it the same as the original layout we were looking at. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click and it will give you text frame options. Okay. In those text frame options, you have the ability to add um, an additional column. So the column says fixed number. Okay, We can fix the width if we want. That means we want to say exactly what width it is. But for right now, we'll just stick with fixed number. And we just want to bump that number up to 2 instead of 1. And then we'll say OK. So we now have 2 columns. Also, anytime you see this red X, the circle box with a plus through it, you will um, have to take note of that because that means there's text in the box that's not showing up. It's outside of the bounding box. We'll take care of that later uh, when we put actual text in there. But for right now, uh, just it is a good thing to take warning of because it does mean you're cutting something off. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with this paragraph. We're going to right click, text frame options, and we're going to bump the number of columns from one to two. Okay? And that one also gives us the red plus in the box, so we need to take note of that when it comes time to change that text. We're going to apply a setting to each of our picture boxes that will make it easier to edit this layout once we place the pictures in the next tutorial. So all I want you to do is simply grab each of the boxes and remember we're just grabbing the ones with the X's through it those are the picture boxes and we hold shift on the keyboard to be able to select multiple items at one time and what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you right click and you're simply going to group those pictures together they are now going to move as a whole but also they're going to be able to be edited as a whole, meaning I can edit all of these all at the same time. So what I want to do is I want to right click and I want to go to this fitting box option. Okay, Because these are all grouped together, it's going to apply this fitting option to all of them. So again, right click, fitting, and I want to say frame fitting options. Okay, And it currently says none. What I want to change that to is fit content proportionally or fill frame proportionally. Um, I'm going to say fill frame proportionally so that it uses my pictures and it stretches them to fit inside of the box. I'm going to hit OK. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab our text boxes. Okay, Holding shift I've grabbed all four of them including the title box. We're also going to make that a group just so that they're all together in the same place. Okay, and then what I will do is grab the last three boxes, which are graphics, and I'm going to group them. And then when we apply the color to the group, it will apply it to all three of those boxes, and we will be ready for the next two tutorials. At this point, you should have something very close to what you see here. We need tomorrow. She awesome. You guys at Bobby. Okay. It's ten. Okay. Go back.